Electric car manufacturers go far out of their way to make their cars as quiet as possible. They select pumps, fans, tires, stuff like that that are quieter than the ones that are used in internal combustion cars. This may seem counterintuitive. Electric vehicles are already quieter. Why would you go out of your way to make them even more quiet? But it's because the powertrain is so quiet that electric cars seem louder. Pumps, fans, all these little noises are drowned out by the internal combustion engine under the hood. And when you get rid of that internal combustion engine, you start to notice all of those sounds, so it seems louder. Hums and clicks and buzzes and the full volume AM radio of the old guy in the immaculate Chrysler LeBaron driving next to you. You start to notice all those things. Engines drown out a lot of that noise and it's even more... T Wait, have we done the intro graphic yet? And it's even more true on older cars. Modern cars have a lot of seals and sound deadening and all sorts of stuff to keep those little noises down, and the big noises too. One of the most common warranty claims for a new car is when somebody takes that car through a drive through for the first time. The noises of all of those pumps and high pressure injectors bounce off the wall and in through the window. All of those noises were always there, you just didn't notice them before. NVH stands for Noise, Vibration, and Harshness. Auto engineers won't say this or that car has a lot of road noise. They'll say it has poor NVH, or that the NVH is really bad, or that the NVH department must be comprised of the founding members of Cannibal Corpse. You can think of NVH as a spectrum. On one side, we have a mother's womb. Quiet. Dark. Comfort. On the other side of that spectrum, we have my Honda S600. This car has no interior to quiet the sound, no carpet, no roof. You can see the ground from several places inside the car. On top of that, a lot of the panels are not well constrained. They vibrate, amplifying the sound and making the car considerably louder from the inside than it is on the outside. I love this car, but I can't drive it without earplugs. The goal of this car is to make it daily drivable, comfortable enough to be driven every day for long stretches without needing earplugs or copious amounts of Advil. This car doesn't have much in the way of sound barriers. There wasn't much effort put into keeping all the panels and parts from rattling and vibrating, and I'm getting rid of that big white noise generator under the hood. So now I have the trifecta of irritating noises. This car is never going to be as quiet as a brand new Tesla, but it does need more effort than Jaguar put into it 70 years ago. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a white noise generator and install it under my hood. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do three actions, three things. I'm going to replace all of the seals. I kind of need to do this anyway, since the old ones are not great. Most modern cars these days have at least two full seals all the way around the door, and sometimes a third at least part way around. The Jag, surprisingly, came with two layers of sealing around the bottom, so I'm going to fix up these with some newer seals. I'm also going to need to reseal around the air vents, which don't look great, and the sunroof seals that look non-existent. I'm also going to dive into the aerodynamics. The airflow around a car can create a lot of noise, sharp edges, small gaps, anything not shaped like a teardrop, which is pretty much this entire car. All that stuff makes noise. There's not a lot we can do about that, but there might be some helpful things here and there. I know some of you are saying right now, Matt, this is not helping you get the car driving. Shouldn't you be maybe worrying about that stuff later? Yes, you are right. I will worry about those things later. But right now I have the interior of the car all apart and to get it driving, I will need to start putting parts back together like the steering and the pedals and the seat. There is one thing that will help keep noise down a lot and it'll be way easier to do it now when it's all disassembled. And that brings us to our third thing. <laughs> My Honda is a textbook case in NVH. Sounds from the intake, exhaust, tires, other vehicles go right through the floor and the firewall, bounce around inside, rattling and amplifying on all the panels, making the whole driving experience kind of miserable. I attempted to mitigate this by adding some cheap sound deadening mat. This didn't do anything. And now they're all stuck on and it's gonna be a nightmare removing it all. There has to be a better way. Hey, what about Dynamat? Dynamat is great. There are a lot of people who geek out on this sort of stuff, and in all the quantitative measures, Dynamat comes out on top. In fact, it's a little weird to see competitors straight up admitting that they are second best. If you watch my videos, you know that I like being cheap, but there are a lot of places where you get what you pay for, and this is one of them. So I chose Dynamat. Then I called them up and said, hey, do you guys want to sponsor a video? I mean, super fast Matt, Dynamat, eh? And they were like, yep. 
They sell pre-cut kits for a lot of older cars that already have the cutouts for holes and contours. They just started selling these kits for Teslas, so if you really care about sound, an EV with Dynamat installation is about the best place you can start from. They unfortunately do not sell pre-cut kits for a 1950 Jaguar Mark V, so I will have to take their generic rectangles and make them fit. I'm trying to limit three different things here. One is panel resonance. The floor and firewall of this car might as well be percussion instruments. They're so big and unconstrained that any road vibration is going to create some resonance. So I'm going to use Dynamat Extreme on the entire floor and the firewall. Also, everywhere else. Normally, you would want to clean up your surface with some sort of solvent, but I just painted this, so we're probably good. The key to this working well is to make sure it all sticks to the panel. You don't want to just press it on with your hands. You need to use a roller and make sure it's all stuck. Don't use a solid plastic roller. You'll want one that's rubbery and has a little bit of give to it. I also recommend a corner roller to get the edges. After you place your first piece, you can use the backing to cut out a template for the next piece. If you're doing two pieces on opposite sides of the car, you can just fold the dynamat over and cut out your piece. Then you'll have a mirrored side as well. Pro tip here, when you cut this stuff off and expose the edges, it's sticky and it might stick to your pants if you sit on it. So lay down some cardboard or something. If you're like me, this is not much of an issue since you already ruined these pants literally the day you bought them. The Dynamat Extreme goes everywhere. The floor, the roof, the firewall, behind the rear seats, and the doors, inner and outer. On the firewall and the floor over Dynamat, I use DynaPad. This is a three-layer material. It works pretty well as a carpet pad and reduces the transmission of road noise. It also helps reduce engine noise if you have one of those. This stuff doesn't have an adhesive backing on the floor. You can just lay it down, especially if you're going to put carpet over it anyway. I have a totally flat floor, so this was super easy. On the firewall, I used a spray adhesive. I recommend 3M Super 77 or Super 90. I used 77 on the firewall, but I had to use Super 90 on the stuff that was hanging upside down. This stuff goes on black side out, gray side against the metal. Unless you put your template on wrong and accidentally cut it out the wrong way, then it's probably fine. Just put it in there backwards. Nobody's ever going to know. All right, so with so little space, I'm putting the whole thing back in here with the backing on it. And then I'm going to try to get the backing. I'm going to start peeling the backing on the top. And then I'm going to reach up under here and grab it. And then line this thing up where it's supposed to go and peel the rest of it off. OEM manufacturers use a material like this on the inside of the door and it makes a significant difference. One of our pre-production cars came off the line without the sound deadener and you could tell instantly when somebody closed the door. It's the difference between a luxury car door and someone playing drums on a cookie sheet. You don't just get the cookie sheet sound when you slam the door, you'll also hear it as the road vibration rattles the panel. So the whole interior gets the sticky black stuff, the floor gets the foam sandwich, and on the roof I'm going to add some Dyna liner. This is a thinner foam. I'm going to do this for two reasons. This will help block more of the sound from passing through into the car, but it will also keep the temperature down. The Dynamat alone does this as well, but this is a black car with a large black roof, so without any insulation it's going to get real hot real fast. And that's about it. Yes, this is a bit of a detour from getting the car running, but it's just a lot easier to install this stuff now before I install everything back in the car. I I didn't really need to do the doors, but I do need to take the door cards off so I can scan them and get new ones laser cut, but more on that later. I might record all my videos in here. I kind of like it. What will I build next? I don't know. I do know, actually. It's right in there. But if you want to find out, hit that subscribe button and follow along. Be sure to like and share and all that other stuff, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>